Good morning. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for Saturday morning cereals. As always, I'm your host, the Captain, Captain Cartoon. And uh, I'm trying to think of what to call you guys. The Animation Nation? Um, the uh, Serial Files? Um, hmm. The uh, SMS family? I don't know. What do you like? What do you think you guys should be called? So. Hey. I mixed some stuff up last week. A whole different week. Yeah, I'm bringing some stuff back this week. Not going to lie. A lot of the same stuff from last week. Um, but. I put it in different order. Mostly, I guess, kind of. And I'm still looking for cartoons. Um. Somebody asked for SWAT Cats. Uh, nope. Uh, Thunder of the Barbarian. Nope. Um, Silverhawks. No. Voltron. No. Um, what else can I? I'm always looking. So we're always testing the waters out there. I mean, last week I tested the waters with Wildcats. And I know it's not an 80s. That's a 90s cartoon. Um but hey we're allowed to show it so we did boom so that's what we keep doing i keep testing the waters i'm always going to do that i'm going to do eight episodes and then put a ninth try to put a ninth after the credits uh because that way if i can't air it i can just trim it off and then you just don't get nothing that week if i can't air it so as always sigh for, yeah so let's say sigh fridays because i just shot that so, Saturday Morning Serials is brought to you by RU Game, the best comic book collectible uh, toy, movie, video game, magic uh, store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And here we go, here we go guys. Um, you like it, you still do. Uh, I have fun with this one, and somebody brought it out. Um, yes, Glomer does sound a lot like Jar Jar Binks, unfortunately. Um, so here you guys go. This is It's Punky. Uh, this is Winning Isn't Everything. And uh, Punky Wise, Pound Foolish. And uh, hey, my dog just attacked the camera there. So... Enjoy. as they demonstrate their poise and... Forget that! I want to watch the game! And here's the pitch. Baseball? That's tacky! It's a hit! A long fly ball to center! It's going! Going! It's gone! Her throb hotel is on! Will John take Susan to the prom? Or will he... Wait a minute! I'll miss my aerobic show! That's not fair! And one, and two, and one, and... Give me that! Not a chance! Let me have it! Mom! Oh no! What happened? TV Kapoom Kapoof! No! What am I gonna tell Henry? How about TV Kapoom Kapoof? No way! If Henry finds out, I'll be grounded forever! Maybe we could have it repaired. Yeah, maybe if we all chip in. 
nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Not even close. What's this? Guess the jelly beans and win a television set from Dumart Department Store. Brandon, you're a genius. This is it. But there's no way to guarantee we'll win. Oh yes, there is. Now, if we all count one fourth of the jelly beans, we'll come up with a winning answer, right? And don't say no. Just look for the display. I knew it was going to be a bad day. I'll bet the jelly beans were over here. is not a playground. I'm so embarrassed. I'll never be able to show my face in there again. At least not until the next sale. So, are we winning TV box yet? No, and we won't. Unless we somehow get back into the store. Ugh. Can you believe anyone would buy these tacky dresses? My grandma just bought one last week. Oh, um, I'm sure it looks good on her. Okay, the coast is clear. Start counting, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Come again. Nine hundred and thirty-two. Okay, that's yours, Cherry. What you got, Alan? A stiff neck and tired eyes. Hey, Punky, where is everybody? Uh oh. I think the store is closed. You mean I'm going to miss dinner? If I don't get home, Henry will be furious. We've got to find an unlocked door. Keep your fingers crossed. It's no use. This one's locked too. Great. How am I gonna wash my hair tonight? Well, I usually use shampoo. Great. No lights. That's gonna help us a lot. You're not scared, are you? No. Depressed. All these great clothes, and I can't see to try them on. Gloomer, can you open the door? Well, do Bizbots eat whistle tabs? I hope that means yes. <laughs> it's working! It's working! So's the burglar alarm. <laughs> it's cool bark. Counting jelly beans. I hope you learned a lesson from this. What about Glomer? I know. Please, I uh, I forgot something in there. What? Er, I forgot. Thanks for calling me, Sergeant. Hi, Henry. Punky, you're safe. Do you know the trouble you've caused? I'm sorry, Henry. After this stunt, there'll be no television for you tonight. Well, if you insist. Punky food. Yay! A great dozen. Sherry. I've got to get into the store before someone finds Glomer. Do you have any ideas? We could get there the minute the store opens. Yeah, along with everyone else. Well, we can't get in before it opens. Hmm. Maybe we can. Cleaning crew 
reporting for duty. Mm. Kids! Homer! Homer! Where are you? I know where he's been. That says Glomer to me. Hey, Punky, look at this. Tiny teeth marks. Poor Glomer. He thought this wax fruit was real. You mean it isn't? Ugh. Up there in the van. Glomer, we're coming. I can't reach. What? Watch it, Punky. Whoa. Glomer, are you in there? May I help you? Uh, um, are these on sale? And don't come back until you have a charge card. But I have a charge card. Margo. Boutique? Card shop? Record store? If you were a lost lonely, where would you be? The lost and found department. Come on, Alan. No, come on. Wait a minute. For once, Alan actually makes sense. I did? At least I hope so. Mm, uh, have you seen a little, uh, sort of, uh, he's sort of brown and furry. I mean, uh, can I take a look? Help yourself. Okay, one stuffed toy. Thanks. I found him. Glomer, I was so worried about you. Me lost. Get found, though. All right, I'm taking you straight home. The home with the broken TV? Oh, yeah. We've got to hurry. Jelly Bean Contest ends in five minutes. Attention, please. It's time. For the great jelly bean countdown. Punky, how'd you figure out how many jelly beans to guess? Well, I added our ages, multiplied by our height, and divided by our address. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Yes, a Miss Punky Brewster. We have a winner. We won! We won! We won! We won! Of course, that's just how I would have done it. Here I am, Punky Brewster. You? Oh, well. Here's your television. It's superific. Give me that. It's my turn. No, I want to watch. That's not fair. Punky, all of you, stop that. Oh, hi, Henry. Uh, we were just watching TV. You're not watching anything. I'll settle this. Do you realize this kind of behavior could break this television set? Shuckers, anyone?
we now return to Funky Brewster. Come on, Punky, we need an owl. Don't worry, Cherry. With my new glove, there's no way she's hitting it past me. Okay, home, house, condominium, what the difference? Wow, that's out of the ballpark! That's out of the city. But what about my ball? Maybe we'd better follow Brandon. He might get lost. He's just what I need for my rodeo act. Hey, Pooch! Crazy dog? Stop, doggy! I want it. Whoa! Hmm. No license, eh? I'm afraid you'll have to come along with me, fella. Sorry, fella, but you'll have to stay until your owner shows up with a license. It's all my fault. I was supposed to buy Brandon a license, and I sort of forgot. But didn't Henry give you the money? Yeah, but I sort of spent it. Turkey buying new funny love. Oh, but it's no problem. All I have to do is go to the pound and explain. Brandon will be back home in no time. Even without a license? Sure, he's still my dog, right? You mean he's not my dog? I'm sorry, miss, but regulations say until you get a license, anyone who comes up with $25 can adopt the dog. Anyone? I'll be back. Boy, oh boy, Henry's gonna disown me when he finds out, Glomer. Wait, Gullywogs, easy fix. Glomer zap Brandon home. No way. They know my name and address, Glomer. Without a license, they'll just come back and take Brandon away again. Then what do we do? We've got to raise $25, and fast. That's what. Come on! Thanks for your help, guys. But we got to speed it up. Uh-oh. Faster way. Absolutely nothing to it, Punky friend. Great, Glomer. Let her rip. Yeah! Hmm, maybe Glomer better stop hurrying up. If we don't have to now. Nobody's buying our cookies. Well, no use in letting them get stale. Knock it off. I gotta figure a way to attract customers before Brandon winds up as somebody else's dog. Wind up! That's it! Oh, isn't he cute? <laughs> Look at him go! <laughs> what a great toy! <laughs> Me bet Michael Jackson not start like this. Thank you! Enjoy! A dozen? Yes, ma'am. Moonwalking drive me crazy. Hmm. Me working for crumbs. We did it! Twenty-five dollars! Yeah, yeah! All right! Let's get to the 
pound. Now we can free Brandon. Oops. Me here, jangly bells? Boomer, can you fly on ahead and tell Brandon we're on our way? You got it, punky friend. Found pound. Now find Brandon doll. Me just in time. Teach old doggies nearly tricks. Kisses for Punky Friend, Brandon. She on way to getting you out anyway. This way, sir. We have lots of dogs to choose from. Oh, boys. Gloma better be getting out. Split scrathamsies. There they are. I know which one I want. And there he is. That pooch will put some real pizzazz in my rodeo act. Okay, fella. It's time to meet your new owner. $25 for the license, and he's all yours. Oh, Punky not going to like this. Almost there. I can hardly wait to see good old Brandon. Maybe waiting long times to see Brandon Dog. Bloomer, what do you mean? Oh, money's too late. Funny man owned Brandon now. <laughs> what funny man? Funny man. The rodeo! It just came to town. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Okay, we're here. But where's Brandon? You guys look around out front. I'm gonna try backstage. Me also looking too. Sorry, nobody but performers allowed backstage. But I'm kind of visiting a performer, sorta. Sorry. Glomer, we're about to become performers. Well, partner, we beat that there, lawman. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm guessing. But where Brandon? Ladies and gentlemen, here's that hold-down, low-down clown, Rodeo Ralph, and his dog, Buster. Oh, no! There's Brandon! He looking different! I'm gonna get my dog. Well, maybe a little later. Hey, you clowns! Get out there! What am I paying you for? Oh, boys, he not looking like welcoming party. Glomer thinking we all need more new springs. Glomer, gonna get clobbered. I gotta help him. The Glomer changing minds about your business career. Ooh. <laughs> Lomer. Too easy for you to stay, Papanke! Lomer! Try to get off! Don't have nothing to it! You're much softer than that bull beastie, Brandon Dog. Lomer, Brandon, you're safe! <laughs> Funny man, not! Lomer, we gotta save him. We're going to be riding roping cow folks. That's a hoax, Glomer. Right on, cow person! Great, Glomer. Now what do we do? Glomer not thinking of everything, you know. Well, here goes nothing. Star! 
this isn't as easy as it looks in the movies. Phew, thanks a lot. You two are a great team. You mean us three? You mean my dog Buster? Nope, my dog Brandon. So, you see, none of this would have happened if I got that license like I was supposed to. Well, I guess since you saved my hide, the least I can do is give you Buster, I mean, uh, Brandon back. <laughs> Come on, Brandon. You've got to get your license registered in my name. Say, you wouldn't want to buy a slightly used baseball mitt, would ya? Next, another interesting story that's in the news. In the news, Uncle Sam wants to count you in. In just two weeks, your family will receive a 1980 census form in the mail. It's important to stand up and be counted to fill out that form. We'll be back with the reasons in the news. Sponsored by the makers of Crayola products. Crayola crayons. It's fun to create with Crayola. You can make a purple lake with fish both thin and fat. Or a happy birthday cake and goofy party hats. Crayola crayons. You can make a ghost to take to funny puppet shows. You can make a spotted snake that grows and grows and grows. Cause it's fun to create with Crayola. Crayola crayons come in this box of 64 different colors with a built-in sharpener. the 1980 census in the news. A census is a counting of people, but the idea of the 1980 census isn't just to find out how many men, women, and children live in the United States, but also where they live and how rich or poor they are. The federal government gives about $50 billion a year to cities and towns. How much each gets depends on the number of people who live there. A poor community with a large population gets more federal money than a smaller, wealthier town. So it's important to get an accurate count. But in the last census, in 1970, the Census Bureau figures it missed counting more than 5 million people. Most of the people missed were poor or members of minority groups, the people who should benefit the most from federal money. The problem is that some people are afraid of the census. For instance, people who are not legal residents of the United States. Most sneaked into the country looking for work, and they're afraid if they fill out a census form, they'll get caught and be sent back to their own country. But the government promises that all census forms will be absolutely secret. It says no one should be afraid to fill them out. So look for your family's census form around March 28th and make sure it gets filled out. I'm Christopher Glenn with the 1980 census in the news. Return of the Jedi. The death-defying speeder bike chase. The speeder bikes battle it out with these terrific Star Wars models. Adjustable cannon. Manually operated speed flaps. Breakaway front end. Who will triumph in this daredevil race against all odds? Only you can decide with Star Wars toys. Hey, I hope you guys like Punky Brewster, or It's Punky. Um, man, like I said, now that I can't, now that somebody pointed that out, man, I can't not hear it. But yes, he does sound like Jar Jar Binks. <sighs> Sorry. But... Here we go, we're going to keep it trucking right along, and we're going to bring you another one that I brought last week that I haven't aired in a while, so that's why we're going to do a couple of them, then I'll, I'll, I'll that, because I, I can only handle so much saccharine sweetness, man. Um, and I know I went overboard on the kissy fur, and I apologize. Uh, I'll probably just finish that up, but we'll, we'll do that a little bit later. Maybe we'll throw an episode here, an episode there, until we get it done. So, bring it back to Get Along, gang. Uh, you know, because somebody brought it up, they're like, man, the Get Along Gang, Kissy Fur, and the Shirt Tails. Uh, 
people go, man, those, those were like a comment. And I was like, man, I never thought that was a thing that, that, that you had to be a, a Kissy Fur fan or a Shirt Tails fan or a Get Along Gang fan. Um, cause to be honest, I kind of just glazed over these cartoons when I was a kid. Um, and just cause I wanted to watch whatever was after that or whatever was before. And, you know, I watched them and I, I you know, they're okay. Um, not my favorite cartoons, but, uh, definitely not horrible. I didn't think, but I did not know there was this whole thing. Just like I did not know there was the big thing about the biscuits and the, the, uh, pawpaw bears, but Hey, love you learn. So, here you guys go. This is Get Along Gang, episode 8. Enjoy. Get along gang, get along gang. Each one so special in his own way. Montgomery's the leader and he's such a good sport. But get along gang, get along gang. There's Wooma and Dottie with the spirit. Bingo the prankster doesn't ruin it. Logic of Porsche will figure it out. And that's the step of the lead machine. Get up with the get along gang. Come on, their adventures don't end. Get up with the get along gang. Uh -huh. Get up with the get along gang. That clock house comes on its way. Fantastic! That's what I'm going to be when I grow up. An airplane? I'm going to be an aviatrix. That's a woman pilot. I've been reading about the great ones like Amelia Earhart. Yeah? Well, Billy Beagle is the greatest of them all. Ever! Ha! Who's this guy, Billy Beagle? He's the best stunt flyer in the world! Yeah, you know the kind that does those incredible barrel rolls? Like this? Better than that, Bingo. Much better. <laughs> How about we fly into hoof nagels for an ice cream? Yeah! What are you kids so fired up about? The air show. You have the poster in your window. We're all going to see the stunt pilots. We're going to see Billy Beagle. Zipper says he's the best. Stunt flyers, huh? Makes me think of the old days when I was a pilot. You were a pilot? Yep. Back about 40 years ago, I was a flying ace. Ah, those were the days. Barrel rolls, loop-de-loops. <laughs> I was pretty hot stuff, if I do say so myself. You must have been the best. I was pretty good. Now, who wants ice cream? That was my plane, beautiful Bertha. I still have the old girl in a barn near the airfield. I'll bet you are as good as Billy Beagle. Did someone mention my name? It's Billy Beagle! Oh, he's so handsome, just like a movie star. Hello, Mr. Beagle. <clears throat> we think you're the greatest. <laughs> you're right, Sonny. I am the greatest. Hello, Mr. Beagle. Welcome to Hoofnagels, Mr. Beagle. From one stunt pilot to another. Um, what other uh, flyer? Where? Me. I was a flying ace. In fact, I still have my plane. Yes. <laughs> nice old timer. I'll bet you were really uh, something once. Anyway, things have changed, Pops. Believe me, you're better off sticking to your ice cream. Now, if you kids ever want to see some real flying action, oh, oh, just come down to my hangar. He was just kidding. No, Dottie, he's right. I haven't flown a plane in 40 years. I'm all washed up. Sorry. I was going on about what a hot shot I was. We can't let him talk to Mr. Hoofnagel like that. Billy's right. Mr. Hoofnagel isn't a pilot anymore. Not like Billy. And I'm gonna go see him. That little rat sneaking off to go with Beagle. Where are you going? Oh, well, 
Uh, Billy is so cute. I thought maybe I could get my picture taken with him. See you later. Poor Mr. Hoofnagel. What can we do? I've got an idea. We'll clean up beautiful Bertha. Then Mr. Hoofnagel can fly her in the air show. It's ruined! It's horrible! What are we gonna do? Well, we could always clean it up. You've gotta be kidding! Come on, guys! We've got to help out Mr. Hoofnagel! Wouldn't it just be easier to build Mr. Hoofnagel another plane? Hmm. I wonder if turning on the windshield wipers would help. Uh-oh. Phew, that was dangerous. I'd better keep away from the controls. Well, at least the dust is coming off. Oh! I'll get those wheels clean in no time. Oh! A perfect four-point landing. I guess I should give Zipper a hand. I'll help you, Zipper. Thanks for the help. Well, well. The job is half done already! <laughs> so, I went into a triple battle roll, and the rest of the flyers just quit. <laughs> they knew they couldn't beat me. Wow, Billy, you really are the greatest. Uh-huh. Now, how about another grape there, Wilma? Just another second, Mr. Hoofnagel. We're almost there. I hope this is worth it. I feel like a mole. <laughs> Bertha, is that you? Surprise! Bertha, you're beautiful again. We got her all ready for you, Mr. Hoofnagel. Now you can enter the stunt competition at the air show today. The, the stunt competition? Now you can show Billy Beagle that you're still the best stunt pilot. Dottie, please understand, I can't fly against Billy. He's the best, and I haven't flown in over 40 years. Oh, but Mr. Hoofnagel, you have to. It might not even be safe. Bertha's an old plane. The motor might not even be working. You can have a mechanic look it over. Yeah, Mr. Hoofnagel. Will you do it? Please. Oh, all right. Yay! What am I saying? There now, that wasn't so bad, was it? Contact! Contact! Bertha, old girl, you've still got it. Wow, this is neat. We're so high up. What kind of stunts are we going to do, Mr. Hoofnagel? Dottie, what are you doing here? I figured you could use a friend up here. You shouldn't go up in a plane without knowing something about it. I told you, it could be dangerous. And there'll definitely be no stunt flying. Oh, I wanted to do some stunts. Yeah! Oh, what's going on? Wow, look at him climb! Isn't he fantastic? Help! Whee! Oh, He's really doing some great stunts! Well, I'm the best! I don't know how this happened. Oh, no! Yay! Ha! I'll show them who's the best. Billy's going up with Hoofnagel. Okay, soda jerk. Let's see what you can do. I'll follow you. Yeah! We can do anything better than you. Hey, I don't take passengers, kid. So what do you want me to do? Walk back. 
Okay, sport, we'll see who can climb higher. Phew. That's much better. <laughs> He's given up. Now I'll show him some real stunt flying. If anything goes wrong, you, you better be in a safe place. Come on, Bingo! Yeah, Bingo, we haven't got all day. Why does this stuff always happen to me? Okay, Billy, let's try for that landing. Wow, they're gonna do it! Thank you, Mr. Hoofnagel. You saved our lives. You sure showed everybody you're still hot stuff. <laughs> yes. You're the best I've ever seen. Well, I sure do feel good. Uh, come on, everybody. Let's go have some ice cream. Yay! Hey, where's Bingo? Boy, Daddy, let me know when we land. I can't take much more of this. <laughs> Careful, guys! Don't slip! Almost! A little harder! I got it! Hooray! Ah! Get along, gang emergency fund. Ah! Next time, couldn't we just hide it under a rock? Boy, we're really getting a lot in the emergency fund. Hey, let's go spend it on something. Not until there's an emergency, Bingo. Charades! Oh, I love charades. Isn't a movie? A silent movie? A monster movie? <gasps> Dad, what's going on? Uh, only uh, you get these 
toys by the door packed up. Hey, Chris, uh, look at this one. <laughs> Some life light. Put me down! This one even talks. Yeah, <laughs> kind of funny looking, though. Hey, what are you doing? Mom, Dad! Okay, tape her up. What do you say we go have lunch? <laughs> Ouch! We're moving! Big city movers! Oh no! I'm moving to the big city! I've got to tell the game! Bingo! How dare you show up here! You guys are never going to believe this! My folks are moving to the big city! And I have to go with them! I suppose next you'll want a going away party. Toddy, I wouldn't lie to you. Ha! Montgomery, you believe me, don't you? Well... Okay, don't believe me. I don't care. But I really am moving. You'll see. Gosh, maybe we were too hard on him. No, it's just another one of his practical jokes. I think. I think it's time to teach this guy a lesson. What do you want? There's no reason to be worried. You're on your way to the big city. So? So? You've never been there. But let me tell you, with all those crazy drivers, it gets pretty exciting. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Yeah, vroom. <laughs> oh, pretty scary. Nah. Of course, with all those cars, there's no place to ride your bike or play ball. Sounds terrible. Well, if you don't like the big city, tomorrow you can move to the moon. <laughs> you moving. <laughs> what a laugh. Zipper, I don't care if there's no place to ride my bike or play ball, as long as you're not there. Boy, the little dope really is upset. City Movers. Bingo wasn't kidding. Montgomery, Bingo really is moving to the big city. He is? We've got to tell the others. Are you sure he's moving to the big city? I saw the big city movers truck at his house. I think we should throw a surprise going away party. All in favor? Aye. Okay, aye. Montgomery, now we have a real emergency. I'm ready for the combination. Gang, call out your times. Three o'clock to the left. Quarter after six to the right. Twelve o'clock, straight up. Here's what's left. And I know just what to buy. Hi, Mr. Hoofnagel. Hey, Bingo. How's your laryngitis? Much better. Mr. Hoofnagel, what can you give to a kid who has to move away from Green Meadow and all his friends don't believe he's leaving? Well, let's see. How does a triple dip three flavor Hoofnagel special sound? With sprinkles? You bet. And there's no charge. You leave in town and all. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hoofnagel, I'd like to get some ice cream for a going away pop. Bingo! What are you doing here? Just having a chat with the only person who believes me. Bingo tells me his family's moving out of Green Meadow. He'll say anything for a free ice cream. You know, he really didn't have laryngitis this morning. What? Is that true, Bingo? Well, I... Why, you little trickster! <coughs> what a kid! Boy, this is probably the worst day of my whole life. I'm even getting a tummy ache from all that ice cream. I just came by to get my things. Oh, that's right. You're moving today. I'll just get my glove and my bat and my ball. Maybe we'll come visit you sometime. That is, if you'll remember who we are. Now I'll just get, get out of the get-along gang. Oh, bingo. There's just one more thing. What? You guys believe me? Of course! Yeah. Yeah. 
It's just that you fooled us so many times before. I promise this is no gag. And now, this is from all of us to you. A Hoof Nagel's Abominable Snow Monster Sundae. Six flavors, marshmallow cream, three different sauces, and a cherry. Looks delicious. Just about does it. Hey, Chris, I thought we already passed that funny looking doll. Oh, no. Not again. <laughs> I'll take care of it, Lee. Ah! I don't think I like this moving business very much. Well, Bingo, I guess this is it. The gang won't be the same without you. Yeah. I think we'll even miss your practical jokes. There'll be plenty of places to ride your bike and play ball. I was just kidding you about the big city. Oh, take care, Bingo. Okay, here I go. <laughs> Must be all that ice cream. We'll help you. So long, Portia. Stick up for yourself. Wilma, you take care too. Montgomery. There'll never be another one like you. Dottie, keep smiling. And Zipper, my best buddy. Is that a tear I see? No. I'll send you my new address as soon as I get there. So long, get along, gang. Hey, they stopped. Here we are. <laughs> you know, this is the shortest move we've ever done. Huh? This is our new house? They're unloading the furniture. Don't tell me. The beavers are moving into Henry Hedgehog's old house. He fooled us again. Well, gang, I guess things are back to normal. The Get Along Gang, Get Along Gang. After these messages, we'll be right back. We are here at the crunch -a to draw the winners in the Where's the Captain sweepstakes. How's it work, Captain? Millions answered right. The Milky Way was correct. From those entries, 10,000 winners are drawn. Another winner. Congratulations to you too, Captain, for putting the crunch on that. Sogmaster? No one puts the kibosh on the slosh. We'll see, Sogbath. Thanks for entering. Winners got a letter from me. <laughs> is he gone? Captain Crunch is part of a balanced breakfast. Sometimes grown-ups touch kids in ways they don't like. I was wrestling with my uncle, and it changed. It felt icky. When touching feels funny, it's hard to know what to do. He said I shouldn't tell anyone. If that ever happens to you, say no. No. Then go. Go. And tell someone you trust. Tell. Say no. Then go. And tell. A message from the American Medical Association. Hey, that's right. I'm reading an old issue of Fantastic Four. It looked like somebody took a bite out of, uh, you know, because that way, that way you don't, don't, you know, ruin a perfectly good book just reading something. So, man, love me some old Jack Kirby stuff. All right. I hope you guys liked the Get Along Gang. I know you still like the Get Along Gang. But, uh, here we go. This is one I aired, uh, but not necessarily in that order. Um, that's right, mask, you know, like I said, I like mask, man. Um, somebody pointed out that, that they thought Thundercats was better than mask. It, it, those, man, some of these cartoons are hard, man. Um, G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man, Thundercats, uh, Silverhawks, mask, uh, it's really hard to, 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 put them in order. I'm not gonna lie. Um, depends, man. Some episodes I really like. Some episodes I didn't like. Um, you know, I guess, I, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna, I should give Thundercats the, the edge because they were able to do not one, but two returns. Even though the last return was horrible. 
Now, the, the mid-2000s, just like He-Man, those were great. So, I don't know. We need, we need to reboot a mask, man. Just bring it back. We keep getting Transformers. We keep getting He-Man cartoons. And we keep getting G.I. Joe cartoons. Bring back mask. Do something with it. Man, that's, that's a franchise begging to be brought back. But here you guys go. This is Mask Episode 4. And this is Highway to Terror. Enjoy. Excuse me, sir. I'm Captain Miller. You're blocking a military convoy. Oh, I am, am I? Well, you see, I'm a magician, and I'm here to entertain your troops. What? Watch. Over here, Captain. Just what's going on? your battle stations. <laughs> Guard the trailer! Sir, the semi with the plutonium. It's gone. What? That's impossible. It disappeared. Are you sure it was Venom? Captain Miller gave me complete descriptions of the uniforms and masks. It's been confirmed. Huh. Said they were magicians, did they? That's amusing. The only tricks they know are dirty ones. And this time, they made an extremely valuable truck disappear. I'll guarantee you, it wasn't magic. We need your help, Matt. You can count on it, Dwayne. Scan the personnel files for the mask agents best suited for this mission. Personnel selected, Bruce Sato, mechanical engineer and design specialist, vehicle code name, Rhino. Hondo McLean, weapons specialist, tactical strategist, vehicle code name, Firecracker. Brad Turner, motorcycle and helicopter pilot, vehicle code name, Condor. Alex Sector, Computer and Communications Expert, Rhino Systems Commander. Buddy Hawks, Master of Disguises, Intelligence Expert, Firecracker Co-Pilot. Dusty Hayes, 
Auto and Marine Stunt Driver. Vehicle code name, Gator. Gloria Baker, Champion Race Car Driver. Black Belt in Kung Fu. on a mission? I'm afraid so, Scott. All right. When do we leave? Shortly. But you're only going halfway. I'm dropping you off at Clear Lake with Mr. Spencer. You know where the three pounders are. And where the pound and a half rubber boots are, too. Tell you what. If I catch my limit on the first day, will you come and get me? Nice try, Scott. No deals. Now get packed. all set. Did you see those army guys? The trap doors and smoke bombs worked like a charm. Yeah. Wonder what the captain said when he found out his shipment was missing. Well, if he knew what we were going to do with the plutonium, I don't think he'd be too happy. That's the only information we have for now. We have to handle this with kid gloves. You mean special gloves? But plutonium is highly radioactive. And in the hands of Venom, the danger is even worse. We have to get it back. Lad, Matt. Hi, Mr. Spenson. Remember T Bob? How could he forget me? I caught more fish than both of you last time. That's because you fell in. And with those fish all over you, you look like a can of sardines. <laughs> <laughs> nice seeing you, Mr. Spenson. I'll call you soon to see how you're doing, son. Be careful, Dad. This is where the army semi disappeared. Let's see if we can find anything. Peaceful as a summer cloud. Peaceful maybe, Brad. But eight tons of truck doesn't disappear into thin air. An illusion is little more than a theft from the eye. What thunder is he talking about? He's saying, buddy, the hand is quicker than the eye. OK, spread out, scour the area. Look for clues. Earthquake! Patch into satellite sensors. According to the satellite readings, it's Central City, 7.2. The epicenter under the Geological Research Center. Hmm. 
That's odd. But it's no coincidence. Venom's inside. What are they doing in there? Nothing worthwhile. Come on. like a good earthquake to scare people away. Good job. Let's get going. This is it, Venom. Help! Somebody help! Viper! Fire! How convenient. Let's get out of here. Bruce, Brad, Alex, Gloria, help that woman. We'll take care of Bennett. Stiletto, fire. Penetrator, on. <laughs> Torch, on. Backlash, fire. <laughs> Right, Dusty? Well, sort of. Venom got away. Don't worry. At least we got what they were after. Did you figure out what it was? It's a computer component used to divert earthquakes from populated areas to the desert or ocean floors. Then obviously Venom has the means to create earthquakes. That's obviously what the plutonium was for, some type of earthquake device. But why do they need such a thing? Believe it, Mr. Svensson? T Bob still catches all the fish, and he doesn't even have a license. Maybe we ought to report him. No one would believe you because I'd turn into a. Okay, you win, T Bob. If you two are going swimming, you better hurry. Lunch is on shortly. Come on, T Bob, I'll race you. Mm. 
Yes, that is strange, Scott. Well, try to make the best of it till I pick you up. All right, Dad. Bye. All of a sudden, Clear Lake is half empty. There's got to be a connection between that and its closeness to Central City. Allow me, Matt. If you pump enough water into an earthquake fault, you can create enough pressure to make the fault give way. If I were to make an educated guess, Venom stole the plutonium for the earthquake device nuclear water pump. Which means they can cause earthquakes, right? Yeah, that's why they're trying to get that computer box. If Venom got a hold of it, they'd be able to direct earthquakes to large cities to bring attention to themselves as a world power. If they want it so desperately, why don't we let them have it? Are you sure the Army's transporting another computer box? I intercepted satellite information. I'm positive. Right on schedule. What's the problem? We seem to have run out of fuel. Perhaps you could spare some. Bring a couple of tanks of propane. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Major. Sorry for distracting you. Take care. Same to you.
Let's go after them. We can't. We've got to stop the plutonium from leaking. We can't let the radioactivity escape. Lift up. On. Over here, Bruce. Good work, everyone. We almost got them. Well, I think it's safe to say Venom won't trust satellite information again. It's so hot! I can't stand it anymore! I'm gonna take a dive! Wait! Stop it, T-Bob! You know how deep the water is there? You'll get seriously hurt if you dive into shallow water. Well, looks like it's okay. About nine feet. Great for diving. Then let's dive! Legoland Gas Station. You build it for action. You can raise a car up on the lift and check the underside, or fill her up, close the hood, and pretend to take a ride. What can you do with the Public Works Center? You can build a crane and watch it drop some bricks into a bin, or lift the door, roll out the truck, and let the bricks fall in. The action's up to you. The Legoland Public Works Center from the Legoland Town Collection. Legoland Gas Station sold separately from Lego Systems. Show your pound puppy how much you love him with snuggly pound puppy outfits. Inky, your hood is on t shirt. We're going biking. Snap your pop's jabby jacket. Pound puppies and outfits, each sold separately. Whoa! Now let's walk to the park. Uh oh, thunder. Put on your dry doggy rain gear and you'll stay dry as a bone. Hooded Hound t shirt, dry doggy rain gear, pup's jazzy jacket, and pound puppies all sold separately. From town. All right. I hope you're still liking Mask. Um. Like I said, man, I love this cartoon. Uh, I do like the fact that they changed up the roster almost every episode. And, uh, you know, cool vehicles, man. Really cool stuff. Uh, I would love to see the live action some of this. Man, could you imagine the, the, the some of these things in, in cool live action? So as long as they don't overdo it like the Transformers where they have it like massive transformations to, to you know, they look weird. So, all right. People keep asking this one, and I'm glad I brought this one here because it's kind of one I forgot. And a lot of people will be like, hey, man, I missed this. Thanks for bringing it to me. Um, and this is a, you know, a 90s cartoon, so it's not 80s, but still people slept on this back in the day. That is King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. So this is episode four, Even Knights Got to Eat. Enjoy. And then, from the field of the future, a new king will come to save the world of the past. Do the 
Are you sure this bird knows what it's talking about? <laughs> Unlike human beings, birds do not know how to lie. Arthur, my boy, I hope you realize this is the chance we've all been waiting for. Now, take my falcon and stand back. Fantastic! Oh. Merlin, you're hurt. It's, it's the magic. Doing that kind of magic takes much life energy. And why did you do it? Why take a chance like that? Because the keys of truth are so important. To free the real King Arthur and his knights, we need all the keys. Thanks to my feathered friend, we know where one of the keys is. I'd do anything to get that key back. You can count on that. When you find the key, you must remember that you and your knights each has his own key. Just as only Arthur could draw Excalibur from the stone, each knight must hold his own key of truth in his hand and close to his heart. Are you certain it was Merlin's falcon, Warlord Blackwing? Merlin's is the only black and white falcon I've ever seen. I flew after it all the way from Crownhorn to Camelot. Strange that Merlin's bird would be in a small village like Crownhorn. <gasps> Morgana! It has passed. I felt a strong disturbance in the magical field, as though... Merlin! He's used his magic for something so important that it drained some of his life energy. I have to know what it is. Come, my viewing rock. Show me what Merlin did with his magic. There. Merlin's created a tunnel of light so they can get past your warlords unnoticed. That must be the exit. I'll take my warlords there and wait for this fake Arthur and his knights. They shall ride into our sword. Don't underestimate Merlin's magic, Viper. He might find a way to make them vanish under your nose. Blackwing, take a force of warlords to Crownhorn. Have them go through the countryside and tell the peasants it is death to any who offer help or shelter to the knights. What could be so important in Crownhorn that Merlin would perform such magic? Only one thing. They must have located one of the keys of truth. Okay, guys, listen up. Merlin's got a tip where one of the keys might be. I say we try and get that puppy back. <laughs> now we're talking. I'm going to take Gallop, Breeze, and Phil to check it out. The rest of you stay here and defend the castle. With those warlords, you can't be too careful. Hey, that key is going to get us one step closer to home. I got ladies waiting for me back there. But remember, this key is the key of King Arthur. I'm the only one who can touch it. King Arthur, Knights of Justice, speak the oath. I am King Arthur. And we are the Knights of Justice. We pledge fairness to all to protect the weak and vanquish the evil.
If we find the key, I'm the only one who touches it. Hey, you're calling the play, Are you sure this ain't another trap? This magic stuff gives me the creep. Hang tough, guys. man in peace. No one gives King Kazak orders. <laughs> <laughs> you heard, Arthur. It's time for you little guys to leave. I wandered onto their territory. They just defended themselves. Is that true? Well, you think just because we're small, we attack people three against one? Hey, wait! You'll never catch him, sir. They have underground tunnels throughout the country. I'm sorry for the trouble, Your Majesty. My name is Orin, and I am your loyal subject. I was coming to warn you that the warlords wait in the village. How did you know we were coming? Everyone knows, though none know why. We've seen Merlin's bird, and the warlords are everywhere, threatening us to make sure you'll get no help. I'd like to believe you, but we've been fooled before. I'll need proof of your loyalty before we can trust you. <coughs> if Merlin's falcon trusts you, that's good enough for me. Come with us. On the way, you can tell me what you've learned. Now, where is that falcon? Look, there! <coughs> I'm closer to my farm. You must all be hungry after your long ride. <laughs> hungry? I could eat a bull with the horns still on. Maybe some food would do us some good, but we shouldn't forget what we came for. Oh, my king, it will be a great honor to welcome you in the Knights of Justice in my humble home. <laughs> Your well, Highness, I'll do what I can to help you find the key you seek. We must find it, and the others. Without them, there is no future. But you are the future, the hope of all people. And you, Kate, <laughs> you're the best cook I ever met. Thank you, Sir Phil. Do you happen to have a few more uh, pieces of chicken left? You got 
got nothing to worry about as long as I'm here. Oh no, Phil. If we fight them warlords here, they'll know that Orin and Kay help us. Right. For their sake, we've got to hide before the warlords get here. Hide? What are we, cowards? No, we're just loyal to Kate and Orin the way they've been to us. Easy, Valor. Easy. You've got to be quiet. Okay? Take your wife with us to the village. No! important than another, Aura. Yo, what's to stop those warlords from smoking Phil and keeping Kate, too? Just what I'm thinking. But maybe we can take Phil's plan and add something of our own to it. <laughs> the peasants hide in their houses for fear of us. Viper is searching every house in this village. If this fake Arthur and his men are here, he will find them. Well, what have we here? Hmm, the farmer has brought us a night after all. He came to steal food just after you left, but I had a trap set and he fell into it. Please free my wife now. Please. No! Oh. No viper has a score to settle with you. Come, see the night we've captured. I knew they'd be interested. The warlords have never had a chance to check out a night that closely. We're gonna hit him while their guard is down. Get Phil back and ride. With a little luck, the warlords will think we took him back on our own and leave Kate and Orin out of it. That's right. There must be 20 warlords down there now. I don't care how many there are. We're not leaving Phil with them. Back! Make way! How did we come by this night? The farmer brought him in exchange for his wife. I don't trust farmers. <laughs> Put them all in the same cell. You guys again? We don't have time for this. Then make time, King Arthur. If we start fighting these dudes, the warlords will hear us for sure. We come not to battle, but to help. Why help us? Well, you helped the farmer when we outnumbered him. Then you spared my life. Why should we not do the same for you now that you're in the same position? If you mean what you say, then we welcome you as friends. If you turn on us, you will have made a powerful enemy. Let Viper think there are only three of us. And myself and my men? What shall we do? Take them by surprise, from everywhere. You're fast and they're slow. We leave this village soon to take our prisoners with us. If Arthur was here, he has left.
life either way you lose. Ten. And now, <laughs> check. Kate have done enough. We'll take it from here. Bless you, Sir Phil. Zack, if you ever need the help of the Knights of Justice, you need only ask. <laughs> That's the nice thing about loyalty. It goes both ways. The Falcon! He's back! Now let's get the key of truth. <laughs> this thing must weigh more than Phil. <laughs> cute, Gallop. Real cute. Move away from it. Excalibur, be my strength! I heard this sword has a thing about stones. We find that key and we can be home in time for the Super Bowl! Be there, baby! Be there! Hold it. Oh, man, I blew it. Now the whole mission was a waste. I'm sorry I yelled at you, Phil. The key's gone, but we'll get another shot at it. And the mission wasn't a waste. I think Merlin wanted us to learn about loyalty almost as bad as he wanted us to find the key. Merlin? Oh, man, how am I gonna break the news to him? Delicately, Phil. Very delicate.
with gripper bases and crusher arms, each sold separately. Hundreds escaping! Okay in there? Okay, Dad! But we won't be safe till we're rid of Hundred. Hundred the Conqueror, Max Steel the Leader, Wrecker the Demolisher, each sold separately. New from Ideal's Robofort. Hey, I hope you're still liking King Arthur. Um, that's, that's a pretty fun cartoon, man. Um, not one I got into when I was a kid, because um, by the time this came out, I was an adult. And, and I put adult in quotations because uh man i tell you what i'll be uh i'll be 48 here shortly and uh, man the first 48 years of childhood are the hardest Whew. i hate to see the day i have to grow up all right gonna bring this one back i love this cartoon very dark spiral zone um don't know how much more I can talk about Spiral Zone yet again, but it's a fun cartoon, man. Um, I dig the designs, and the same guy that designed this designed some Gundams, so there's a very much that kind of feel to it. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, so here you guys go. I don't get into too much more. This is Spiral Zone, Episode 8, Gauntlet. Enjoy. Surrender. Or pay the consequences. Writers, looks like we're coming to a commercial. Let's fight the zone. Ignition. So much for placing the XM-5 recon satellite in orbit. I don't understand why Overlord just didn't zone the whole complex. Well, I said he tried. 
It's the atmosphere there. A layer of heavy air that keeps the zone at bay. That's why the station was put there. Dirk, that reconnaissance satellite will give us invaluable knowledge of Overlord's zone. If we can get it into orbit. And for that, you need the zone riders. Precisely. Your team must get the new rocket fuel we've developed to the base. Its lifting power is ten times that of standard fuel. With it and the radar jammer, the booster might be able to outrun Overlord's guns. This will make the third tribe so far. Why bother with them? They're just savages. They are human beings, Bandit. All must participate in the new order. Fire the zone pod. <coughs> Good throw, Katerina. Yeah. Uh, good throw. Here, Tank. Let me show you how it's done. Hey! Thank you, Max. It is much clearer to me now. Funny. Very funny. Sorry to break up practice. But we've got work to do. Now watch. What is that material? Rocket fuel, Cat. And we've got to get it someplace in a hurry. Precisely. The launch window will close in 24 hours. Overlord has the place surrounded. You simply can't fly in. You'll have to use your zone rider vehicles. And as you've just seen, the fuel is highly volatile and unstable. A bump or maybe even a dirty look might set it off. I'll need two volunteers to carry it. Thanks. I knew I could count on you all. Max and Tank. Well, here's another fine mess you've gotten me into. Human. Ah, and it is not yet noon. Katarina, Hero, we'll try to keep Overlord's forces busy while Max and Tank deliver the fuel canisters. Be careful, man. Yeah, if I can keep Tank from running into a tree, we should be just fine. Uh, we'll do what you say. 
time for a break. Nine. We should keep going. We don't want to get overtired. That leads to careless driving. We have a deadline, Verstein. Listen, I'm the lieutenant and you're the sergeant, and I say we take a break. If those are your orders, lieutenant. <laughs> Don't worry, Max. Your armor will protect you. Get this thing off of me! <laughs> they have retreated, Commander. Should we pursue them? That's a negative, Hero. We want to keep them guessing, so we'll pull back and let them wonder why. Something's wrong. Why aren't they chasing us? Yes, very strange. We'd better check with Overlord. Courage is up to something. Was the entire force with him? I saw Taka not a start, but that's all. Schmidt wasn't there, or Jones. It must be a decoy action. Yes, but why? And where are the other two? Where you going? You nearly blew us to smithereens. Maybe you would like to try both zone rider vehicles. Yeah? Sorry. Yeah. Five minutes to stretch before we hit the zone. Fine by me. I am hungry and those bananas look good. like to laugh around a broken nose. This is stupid. Let's go. I can't pin it down, but I think I have them, Overlord. Good. Bandit and the Duchess will keep courage and the others busy. Reaper will meet you at your location. Ah, I thought we were being followed. We have trouble, Commander. will be back. And now we return with more Spiral Zone action. Oh, well, trouble in the ranks. 
too bad. Hand over your weapons. Smile, chump. closed by 8 in the morning. Yeah, I hope the zone riders come through with the new fuel. Well, I have to wait until morning to travel. One mistake in the dark and our mission is over. Tank? What, Lieutenant? Sir? Nothing, Sergeant. I wonder how Max and Tank are. Probably enjoying themselves. <laughs> you know those two. I hope so. Oh, sounds like rain. That happens a lot in the tropics. Wow. 
target. We've got plenty of time. It will be a rough ride. Kimmel! Wait, what do we do now? You tell me, Lieutenant. We should have taken the route I suggested. Now listen, Tank. Nine, you listen, Max. I am sick of your orders. Yeah, well, maybe you'd like to discuss it. for a delivery? It was moving too fast and they jammed our radar. We missed it, Overlord. <laughs> They've won this one. There is no need to remain. Good work, troops. Especially you two. You make a good team. Yeah, well, <laughs> we would have been here sooner, but Max kept getting lost. Me? You were the one reading the map. We'll be right back with more Spiral Zone action. And now we return with more Spiral Zone adventure. Command forces captured by the Ewoks. What fate awaits them in the model Ewok village? The Ewoks line up their captives as Chief Chirper arrives in the lift. Han Solo is turned on the spit. No one can reach the Ewok village protected by the swinging boulder. Can C-3PO save his friends? Only you can decide with Star Wars toys. Long ago at Rose Petal Place, 
Orchid met Mastina, the evil spider. Doll sold separately. Oh no, Orchid, it's Nastina! Wait till I tiptoe through your tulips, rose petal. Watch out, Nastina, the sky is falling. I won't fall for that. Gotcha! That'll keep her in her place. <laughs> rose petal, Nastina, and Orchid dolls come with all you see here, each sold separately. New from Canada. Hey, how many of you remember Airy Magazine? I have to look over there. Double check. Uh, Man, I loved Eerie as a kid. Uh, Warren Magazine, Horror Anthology, a lot of good name people. I mean, let us, let us list. Neil Adams, uh, Eugene Colin, uh, Frank Frazetta, Steve Ditko, uh, freaking Joe Orlando, Alex Toth, uh, Wall uh, Alan Williamson, Wallace Wood. And that's That was a who's who back in the day, man. Uh, and this one has one of my favorite ones in it, Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, or one of the lost episodes of The Twilight Zone. Uh, it was a short film that they picked up and put on The Twilight Zone, and that's Ambrose Bierce, who's one of the early sci-fi writers, writing books about parallel universes and stuff back in the day. Um, and his death was weird, man. Look into that. Look up Ambrose Bierce. Go home. It's, it's a rabbit hole. Go down that rabbit hole. So... Hope you guys like the Spiral Zone still, uh, because now we are going to Wildcats. Um, man, not gonna lie, man, I dug Jim Lee's Wildcats, uh, the comic, um, the cartoon. I wish they would have got a better, better animation on this, but man, they jumped on everything back in the day. I mean, we got the Max, we got Wildcats, we got. Savage Dragon. Uh, technically, we're supposed to get Young Blood. Uh, I got that personally in my in my somewhere. I, I, I've been looking for it for a while, but it was it's in my it's in my stuff. But the uh, unaired pilot intro wasn't even a full pilot for the Young Blood cartoon. It never happened. So if I ever find that, you guys will get to see it. Uh, so, but I, I liked. Yes, it was. You know, some people go, oh, it's just Jim Lee remaking the X-Men for another comic book company. Yeah, kind of, but not really. I mean, you have Spartan, who's kind of a Captain America type character in a way. Um, I don't know. But I, I liked it. Um, very different, you know, but it was a fun, car fun comic book, fun cartoon. Uh, I do like the later stuff that came along. Uh, for the comic books more than I like the original run, but so here you guys go. This is Wildcats episode two, Heart of Steel. Enjoy. Mission log. Entry 7. Void has detected a Daemonite energy field, heading straight for Infodyne's data processing division. The team's got to get there fast. We may have a hostage situation brewing. Of course, sir. We stake our reputation on confidentiality and total security. situation nobody so much as 
witch, and you might live to tell your grandkids about this. Okay, baby. Come to Papa. Do you have an appointment? As a matter of fact, no. Hey! You can't go back there! Wait a minute! This date is encrypted! What's that supposed to mean? I mean it's just garbage! Who has the access code? You have five seconds to reply. Four, three, two... The head of the division, Karen McKee, but she's at lunch. I hope for your sake she's having fast food. Intruders. Let's roar, Wildcats. The Wildcats. Gee, you don't miss a thing. Destroy them! up my place. Karen. Calm down, lady. Those files are private property. It's okay, Karen. You can trust him. Hadrian? Hadrian? What are you doing here? Who are these people? It's complicated. Where have you been all this time? You never called me again. You just vanished. Listen, this place was attacked for information. Do you have any idea what it might have been? Infodyne's a big company. It could have been a hundred things. The files those creeps were after are totally locked off. Something about Project Alpha. Do you know anything about it? I have the codes, but I can't let you see any of that information. It's top secret. But I might take a look at it for you. But only you. Not them. The rest of you see what Void can dig up. I'll stay here. In case the Troika comes back. I don't know who needs protection worst, her or him. What do you think you're doing? I owe her an explanation, Zealot. I... I still care about her. Spartan, you're a cyborg now. Just tell her the truth and be done with it. You know, you've changed. I have? Yeah. Your taste in clothes has gotten really weird. Look, about Project Alpha... There's plenty of time for that. We've got some catching up to do. I have uncovered only one piece of data on Project Alpha. A photograph of its location. Let's see it, Void. That piece of junk's Project Alpha? You're putting us on. You'll have to do better than that, Void. Negative. If I probe any deeper into the computer network, it will trigger a security shutdown. Then Spartan better get some information out of that woman. If he can keep his mind on business. 
What was that name she called him? Hadrian? His Carabim name, from the old times. Let's just hope it reminds him of his duty. I kept waiting for you, Hadrian. I never even dated another man. What happened? I thought you loved me. Look, Karen, things have changed. I'm in the middle of a war. A war most people don't even know about. What war? There is no war. Hadrian, nothing's changed between us. I still love you. Everything is different. I am different. Karen, please, just decode the files. <sighs> How are you different, Hadrian? That night I missed our engagement dinner. I was attacked by Daemonites. What are Daemonites? We'd be happy to arrange an introduction. Karen, get out of here! She's the one we need. Oh! Hadrian! Good Lord! What are you? Harm! Finish him! Trika, move out! Karen! The Troika got Karen, and the files on Project Alpha. We're on our way. If they've done anything to her, I'll tear them apart. from an abandoned propane plant in Sector 12. Then that's where they've taken her. You sure you're up for this, Spartan? Yeah, old buddy, you're a mess. I never felt better. So, the access code's in here, eh? All right! We've got it! Now Hellspont can have all the energy he needs to search for that gizmo. Troy cut to mothership! We've got the goods! Take us home! Slow down, Spartan! We're almost there! We don't have time to slow down. Okay, let's get this show moving! Don't those wildcats ever give up? Never slag. Warblade, cut her loose. Have you free to slash, lady? Get the computer! Forget it! We've got what we need! The tricks are no match for Carabin's skill. You shall suffer for your insolence, wild cat! Don't be so sure, sucker! This is it, Troika. No more games. Well, it's about time. So long, creeps! We'll never catch up to him now. And they have the files on Project Alpha. Terrific. We still don't know what this is all about. I've got duplicate files at Infodyne, but they're encoded. And those goons took my access key. Void can decode the files. This code is very complex. Your people did well, Ms. McKee. It will take some time to decode the files. Make it fast, Void. The Daemonites are already five jumps ahead of us. She's really a computer? Yes, the most advanced in the world. I told you it was complicated. Could I speak to you alone? What's the story with those two? She's an old flame. And I'm guessing he still carries a torch for her. Oh, great. That's just what we need. I see now why you didn't want to tell me. I thought about getting in touch, but I figured it was best to just let it be over. But it's not over. We both still feel the same way. Karen, look at me. Karen, look at me. I'm made of titanium alloy and 30 different synthetics. The only thing left of me is my mind. Was your real body preserved? Yes, but it is in stasis. Listen, Infodyne's medical division has made some new breakthroughs. They could revive your body and return your mind to it. What? Don't you see? 
You could become the man I once knew and loved again. My place is with the Wildcats. They need me, Karen. I need you too. Where is my body? What? My real body. Where is it? In the Halo Biotech facility. But why on earth would you- Karen says her people can revive it and return my mind to it. You can't. You're too valuable to the team. The team can get along without me. Then what about the world? The Daemonites won't go away even if you do. I am going to be whole again, Jacob. Do not try to stop me. Spartan, it's your body and your life and ultimately your decision. But the Wildcats need you. I have decoded the files on Project Alpha. We must summon the Wildcats at once. Spartan, this is a surprise. What can I do for you? I want my original body back, Dr. Forbes. But, but that... that is impossible. Do not lie to me. Forbes, tomorrow, we've got a problem. Here! You can't do that! The biostasis pods are off limits! Let him have it, Zachary. It's his choice. This crude shack is merely the entrance to Project Alpha. The main lab is far below ground in solid bedrock. It is here that Infodyne technicians have constructed a thermal fusion generator. What the heck's a thermal fusion generator? A device that creates unlimited energy using thermal radiation. We've been trying to build one for years. Looks like Infodyne beat us to it. Why do the Daemonites want it so bad? That's the million dollar question. I am beginning to sense Daemonite presences near the location. You've got to stop them. Take the Merv. Wait, where's Spartan? We need him. He's gone, and I don't think he'll be back. He walked out on us? You're saying we're about to go into battle without our leader? I bet that girl has something to do with this. We can do nothing about it now. Our first priority is to stop the Daemonites. Let's go! First the body must be revived. Then we have to download your memory. In the meantime, make yourself comfortable. I do not feel discomfort. I am a machine. But not for long. A Daemonite hover ship! We're too late! So what? We can take those goons. Then prepare to take on Hellspawn himself, Grifter. The Behemoth! You know, this may not be as easy as I thought. So much for getting the drop on the Daemonites. What the? What's it doing? It's digging its way right into the underground lab. Straight to the thermal fusion generator. Opposing this, you sleaze bucket! 
It's over, Wildcats! You have lost! Gorillion, finish them! More bad news. Void, is there any way we can get to the lab and shut that generator down? No, Zealot. The thermal radiation is too intense. We'd all get barbecued if we went down there. I'm going to take out that power cable. What are you, nuts? The behemoth will blow the murder to bits! like we'll have to do this the hard way. That suits me just fine. Let's roar, Wildcats! A girl can do anything if she puts her mind to it. Time for Ball to get tall. Ready to begin. In a few moments, you'll be flesh and blood again, darling. And we can be together, always. Let's do it. I'm going to shut you down now. Spartan, I can't let you do this. Please reconsider. The others are in danger. They need you. I have done more than my share. I have earned the right to live a quiet life with the woman I love. What kind of a life will it be if Hellspont wins? There'll be no place for love when the Daemonites rule the world. I am doing this for you, Karen. Hadrian! No! The Wildcats need you, Spartan. Now more than ever. I'm sorry, Karen. I will not let you down, sir. Feel the steel, Demo Creek! Didn't anyone teach you drones how to fight? You'll have to do better than that, wild cat. Okay, how about a game of catch? It's time we finish this. And I think it's time you went for a little dip. Last of their weapons. Terrific. But Hellspawn nearly has the behemoth energized. It'll take a miracle to stop him now. Somebody asked for a miracle? Marlo filled me in on the situation. Keep those Daemonites busy. I'm going to shut down that generator. All right. Let's grifterize him. Grifterize? Okay. So I just made it up. It's over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit in here, but I do not melt easily. Down, Spartan. I did what I came to do.
I should not have even thought about getting my real body back. I endangered my friends. I endangered the mission. And you. It doesn't matter to me whether you're made of flesh or metal. What I love about you is inside, and that's still alive. It's over, Karen. I am a wildcat. I'll always remember you, Hadrian. For your sake, Karen, I hope you forget. Spartan to wildcats. I am coming home. skating superstar. At the Winter Olympics this year, Diane Deleu won a silver medal. Today, Diane is working hard on a new kind of skating career. In the News. In the News is sponsored by Nabisco. You'll find quality in our corner. Hi, gang! <laughs> Big Fig here with that great new dance, the Newton. <laughs> Hit it, Al. Years of training and hard work go into the winning of an Olympic medal. But what happens to an athlete once the dream has been achieved? Diane Deleu, the silver medalist at the Winter Olympics, has not retired from ice skating. She is now the star of a touring ice show, something quite to her liking. I'm finding it that I have to go out there every night and give a performance, which in the past I'd be training and working up for one big event a year. And now you go out there and you just do your number, and it's a great relaxed feeling. You just are out there to enjoy yourself and have the people enjoy you. Diane was born in California, but in the Olympics she skated for the Netherlands. Both her parents are Dutch, and that means Diane is both an American citizen as well as a citizen of the Netherlands. She chose to skate for the Netherlands six years ago. People made it seem like I had just gone to the Netherlands that year, but I had been competing there for six years in the national championships, and I originally went there to represent the Netherlands in international competition because in the United States, it's really hard to get into international competition. They can only send three from this whole country. And so I went there when I was 14, and right away I made the world team and started competing, really got a lot of experience. Diane DeLue is now skating toward a new goal as an ice show star in the news. All right, I hope you like Wildcats. Uh, I'm gonna air that for a little bit, give, give you some episodes of that. Only lasted one season. Um, you know, I, I liked it. Like I said, animation could be a little bit better, but you know, Animation was cheap in the 90s, unfortunately. So, here we go. Biker Mice from Mars, we're bringing it back to you. Um, somebody posted the other day, and I apologize if I don't remember who, who posted this. Um, they said they couldn't figure out which one of the Biker Mice was their favorite. Um, man, you're right. That is a hard choice, man. Um I, I couldn't tell you. I have to think about that. That's that's a uh, that's a right. But but anybody out there, tell us what, who who's your favorite biker? What, who's your one of your favorite biker mice? Biker mouse from Mars. Um, I, I gotta think about that one. Um, somebody goes, it's easy with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know. And I'm like, is it though? I mean, I like all those hurdles. I mean. And I guess which incarnation of the turtles, though? Uh, 
the original 80s cartoon, Mikey. Uh, the 2000s reboot, uh, probably Raph. Uh, the movies, Leonardo. So I guess it depends on which one when it comes to turtles. I there, I can't I couldn't tell you who my favorite is or not. Uh, in the in the nineties comic books, later ones through uh, uh, Image Comics, I really like Donatello. So you know wh 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 which one do you prefer? But uh, enjoy Biker Mice from Mars. Have fun. Hello there, kitty. In our first episode, Lawrence Limburger has kidnapped the mayor of Chicago using Greasebit and his goons disguised as biker mice. <laughs> as a result, the biker mice are falsely accused of kidnapping. <laughs> but Limburger's not stopping there. The big cheese is moving ahead with his own plan to steal the entire city of Chicago. <laughs> His first act is to destroy the local diamond mart and vacuum up all the diamonds. Why? That's a surprise. There's just one teensy little problem. That blasted creature Charlie has overheard that the mayor is being held hostage at an abandoned scissor warehouse. She alerts those worthless rodents and they ride off to the rescue. And the biker mice find that they have walked into a trap. <laughs> All right, Greasebit, here's the deal. You let the lady go, and we surrender. Okay, sure. Deal. I wouldn't trust this oil spill as far as I could flush him. Like we got a choice. You're catching on, Bucktooth Brain. You don't cuff him. All right, Grease Gusher, you got us. So let that girl go. Now. Hey, you know, I don't like your attitude. I think I'll change my mouth. Uh, I mean mine. Boys, give the pretty lady a nice set of bracelets. Well, it seems his promise slipped right out of his greasy little mind, boys. Guess we'll just have to remind him. Politely, of course. How about no hands maneuver number five? Oh, can't we do number three instead? I look so cool in that one. <sighs> number five, Vincent. Now! Yeah, my favorite story, a tale of two turkeys. Get off my back, wrench head. Ugh. Goons like you make me want to hurl! Didn't your mamas ever tell you boys not to play with pop guns? You might get hurt. Know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Wise. Now I'm gonna be real polite and ask you again, oil breath. Let the lady go! No, no way! Not a chance, Rodin! Did he? Now! Missed me, Mousy. Well, some days you catch the mouse. And some days the mouse catches you. <sighs> Good breaks. Okay, you're out of here, Charlie. Not without you guys, I'm not. Hey, listen, just because Grease Pit goes back in his deal doesn't mean we do, babe. He's still the law. Let's get our bikes to save me before these grease balls wake up. Hey, where's those renegade rodents? We'll be fine. Just go. <laughs> Try and escape, huh? Oh yeah, you're a real lawman, you are. What an unple- What a delightful surprise. Oh, yes? So where is the traditional Plutarchian greeting? Oh, really, Your High Chairmanship, I'm not feeling quite up to it. No! Cheek to cheek and stink to stink as Plutarchus the galaxy shrinks. <laughs> now that the formalities are over, uh, might I inquire the purpose of your call, your overtness? Just checking up, Limburger. After all, I shall be arriving tomorrow. You will have some serious strip mining done by then, won't you? Uh, excuse me, your ampleness. What 
stuff is it? I, I, I got the mice, boss, and jail. Listen, let me tell you how I... Go on, Limburger. You were mentioning some problems. Problems? Oh, no, you're considering us. No problems. No problems at all. As a matter of fact, I intend to deliver the entire city of Chicago directly to your stench carrier. Oh. Well, congratulations. But I warn you, Limburger, this time you'd better deliver! <laughs> <laughs> Come, Uncle! You called your overripeness? Yes. How is the digging machine coming? Almost completed in your succulent richness. Then all I need is a driver. Someone experienced in burrowing underground. I anticipated just such a brainstorm from you, and I have the answer, your individually wrapped Behold! The tunnel rat. Are you insane? Another mouse? Mouse? That's a mouse. I'm a rat. I eat mice for breakfast. Yes. I like him. <laughs> uh, these heinous felons, your honor, done kidnapped the most honorable mayor, blew up your basic diamond moth, was trespassing mid malice a forethought on the local steel foundry, uh, and, and, and held up a toy store, yeah, and, 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 and resisted arrest. Yeah, that's it. Put him away for life. Man, this guy's testimony is as dirty as he is. It's unfair. And unfair makes me unhappy. Stand aside. What are you gonna do, big fella? You're not a lawyer. No, but I've seen every single episode of L.A. Law three times. <clears throat> Your Honor, I have an objection. Uh, yes? What is it? Your Honor, as it was clearly shown that the Diamond Mart was being demolished previous to our arrival, it clearly falls under the clause of uh, postum in tropicum. We weren't responsible. What are you and saying? ipso facto, since we were in the process of attempting a rescue of the mayor... Got all this from TV? Yeah, too bad there's no commercial break. No way we could have held up the alleged toy store in question. It would have been much too heavy. Quid ergo demonstratum. Your Honor, I have concluded my defense. Yes, yes, yes. brilliant testimony, I think. This court finds you three not guilty. You're free to go. Please. Guys, I came as fast as I could, but I'm still trying to find a lawyer. I... A l lawyer? No, no more lawyers, please. They are free to go. And as soon as possible. Free to go, huh? That's what you stay. I'll just have to rest you again. Harder this time. You'll have to catch us first, Grease Dump. And we're not sticking around. But you are. Hey! Get these things off of me! Blast you blasted biker mice! Yeah! Listen, guys. Whatever Limburger's up to, it's gonna happen soon. He's building something big at a secret factory just outside town. Hmm, I don't know what it is. But if Limburger's part of it... You know it's gonna stink. Come on, bros. Time to rock and ride! <laughs> the big cheese ain't gonna like this. <laughs> this is it, your cheesiness. The digging machine. With the stolen diamonds as its teeth, it can chew through anything. <laughs> Impressive. But is it big enough? Oh, yes. Big enough to strip mine all Chicago in a single day. <laughs> Say farewell to Chicago, gentlemen. Because by this time tomorrow, the Windy City will be gone with the wind. <laughs> This contraption moving. I've got a city to steal. Raton, Raton. Ready to dig, Mr. Big. Let's do it. Hold the train, Limburger. You're not giving the shaft to Chicago if we can help it. You operate under a gross misconception. You see, you're not going to be able to stop me, you repulsive rodents. Hey! <clears throat> 
A present company accepted, of course. So, rat. Now get them, you miscreants. This is where we came in. Hit the highway, bros. Shoulders is now mine to mine. Man, these guys are a pain in my tail. Hey, let's throw them for a loop. Hang on, Charlie girl. Are you guys crazy? Ah! Oh, man, just. Must be how things look in China. Take out the papers and the trash, or you don't get no spending cash. Well, they certainly look at home there. But where's Limburger and that big machine? Now I got a stinking feeling Limburger's more underfoot than ever. Oh, rat, can you dig it? This is so much fun. It should be rated. Wonderful. On to Chicago. You know, we could have come out that other hole we blasted when we went in. <laughs> Are you kidding? Where's the fun in that? Fun's over, guys. Look! Lindbergh undermining the whole city. If he reaches the buildings with people in him... Mm, it looks like Lindbergh is finally getting into heavy rock. Which means we gotta roll. Grab the rest of those leftover diamonds and follow me. How gratifying. Reminds me of the final days of Mars. I must tell the High Chairman. Limburger, what do you want? I'm in my bath. Well, all right. Uh, let's dispense with the greeting this time, shall we? Oh, just this once. Have you called to report your failure? Not at all. The entire city of Chicago is crumbling at this very moment. I can absolutely guarantee you delivery. You better, because if you don't, you'll be cleaning my whole stench carrier with your tongue! Not to worry, you asinine aristocrat. Not even the biker mice can possibly stop me now. Limburger's machine is headed straight for Sweet Georgie Brown's radio station. The fiend. Must be a country western thing. Now that's the final dig. Now I'm mad. Yeah, Limburger's fighting dirty now. No overgrown cheese mold chops, my favorite radio station. Hope these new modifications work. <laughs> You got it! Blast off! It really works! It's boring right through! Yeah, I don't think it's boring, I think it's kind of fun! We're not catching up! It's too fast! We gotta head it off! Why don't we take the shortcut, guys? What? what? Follow me! Wow! The subway! Rock and rail! Next stop, the big cheese. Have we destroyed that irritating radio station yet? Just ahead. Gonna rock it down. Huh? That's far enough, Limburger. It's those wretched rodents. Drill them. Now. That's it, bros. Fire at will. I'd rather fire at the machine. Just do it. Tail and run back where he came from. Good idea. I can't do as much damage that way. It's turning. Ow! Are we the baddest underground sensation or what? Not this way, you vapid bowl. Turn around. Those plastic mice are interfering. Then take care of them. Gladly. Nothing a tunnel rat likes more than a good quarry. Uh oh. 
Oh, now what? Then it's bad news. No, it's good news, Biker Mice, for me. You see, you're about to be destroyed. Meet your personal escort to the afterlife. Tunnel Rat! I tear pieces to pieces. Gonna ice you, mice. Let's bring him down and get our tails topside. Yeah, fast. The radio reception down here is loud. Digging machines dead ahead. Prepare for Operation Bullfight. A car, Uncle? They're coming right at us. Uh, emergency procedures? Mises. Yeah, that'll hold him. Until Carbuncle sends him back to whatever rat hole he crawled out of. Okay, now that we've trapped the rat, it's time for the cheese. Malfunction! The controls are dead! No! I have to have control! I'm the mayor! Not for long, Limburger. Your days as head cheese are over. Not so fast. Politics is a power game, Rodent. And in this game, I still hold the winning hand. Yahoo! Never fear! Biddy's here! It's an honor to give you a ride, Your Honor. Get him to safety, Viddy. We'll wrap things up here. Let's bail. <laughs> Where are we headed? No! Not my tower! No! That was fun! <laughs> oh, now what? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. You young heroes have saved not only my life, but our city as well. Ah, uh, shucks, it was nothing. Uh, no big deal. Just doing our duty as citizens. No, I must reward you. Okay. okay. How about free passes to the opera? Uh, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, the key to the city? Uh, an invitation to the policeman's ball? Been there, done that. Parking validations? Nah, that's okay. Well, then I'm sorry. All I have left are coupons for free hot dogs and root beer. Done deal! We'll take them! Ride free, citizen. Oh, uh, yeah. Ride free. So you failed after all. What do you have to say for yourself, Limburger? Um, may I offer my traditional Plutarchian respects to your... There's the crew's bathroom. Now get to work! All right, free hot dogs! Fruit beer! And rock and roll! Party! 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 Not so fast. You guys aren't getting off that easy. What? This city's a mess. We've all got to pitch in and help clean it up. But, but... Hey, babe, we saved the city, remember? Doesn't that get us off the hook? Not if you're good citizens, it doesn't. She's right, bro. This job's not over yet. Oh, man, I knew fighting underground was going to be a dirty job, but this is ridiculous. Clean it up the city, going down, down, down. Clean it up the city, woo! We gotta get down. Honestly. <laughs> Oh, 
Sky Commanders, where all the action is above the ground. Each sold separately with a figure, as Battletrack Protector sets his defense. Battletrack locked! High above, the evil Jackal Raider takes aim. Sky Commander, head for cover! Launch, Jackal! Miss me, Raider! Rapid deployment, counterattack, charge! Sky Commanders, protectors of the high frontier. Got him! Yeah! Battletrack Protector comes with everything seen here. Other vehicles sold separately. New from Kenner. One day, many years ago... Mmm, tasteless. Chocolate and peanut butter. Hey, it's great together. You know who'd like this? Noah. You mean the guy building the ark? Yeah, because he loves chocolate and he loves peanut butter. Let's bring him some. As soon as it stops raining. And so the world would have to wait for the two great tastes that taste great together in Reese's peanut butter cups. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I did not think I was gonna like this stuff from Archie. The horror stuff, man. Cause somebody goes, you know what Archie needs? Uh, werewolves and vampires. And I'm like, that's dumb. And I was like, well, they did have a witch. For like a long time. And then the witch got really good. And I like the new Sabrina stuff. Not not the classic stuff. Um, the comic book wise. But I like the new Sabrina Teenage Witch stuff. Uh, Archie vs. Predator is surprisingly one of the best, weirdest comics you will ever read, ever in your entire life. Um, it, it's... And then they, they did multiples. That's the crazy part about it. But yeah, go go find Predator versus Archie. Weird. Uh, Punisher versus Archie is also great because uh, that's that's another bizarre one. So, but hope you guys are still liking Biker Mice from Mars. Um, and that was uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you that was episode three, and that was the second part to Reeking Rain of Head Cheese. I don't know why I did not tell you that at the beginning. So we'll have to put it at the end. Um, we're going back. Doing another one. Because I've been putting these together for some odd reason. I don't know why. Uh, I tend to put groups of, of, of episodes together. And uh, I don't know why I do that. Yeah, you know, like at the beginning of this episode. I put the, the cutesy ones at the beginning. Um, and then I always put like uh, Mutant League and... Uh, Skeleton Warriors. Try to put them together. and I, I don't know why I do that. Um, so I'm going to try to mix this up a little bit more. But uh, I, I flipped these though for now. This reason. And I don't. I'm sitting there looking at that. Looking at my notes. And uh, we're going back to the Wild West Cowboys. Uh, Moo Mesa. Um, somebody, somebody. I think I like this one a lot. Because it, it's. It's. There's no humans. Um, you know, it's not like they have to fit in with the humans. And I, I like that whole aspect. They don't they don't have to try anything. And yet again, I might have to add this because this will be the fourth one in the Space Cowboys. This is a, another world. So, one of these days you're going to get Cowboys and Moon Mesa, Brave Star, uh, Galaxy Rangers, and Saber Riders. You're going to get four Space Cowboy movies. <laughs> movies cartoons so here you guys go um this is cowboys of moo mesa episode three bulls of a feather enjoy common phrase the mesa to the western skies with the sound of a thousand cattle drive a chosen few would see the light and find the wrong with right up on the mesa
Don't hand me the key or the doll away from Jersey City. <laughs> I guess she ain't gonna never know. <laughs> hey, boss, I got the pay dirt <laughs> payroll. <laughs> you clumsy fool. Go <laughs> oh, get the boot here. Why didn't even bother using this guy all the time? He gets me so mad. I got you. Didn't beat this guy up. Wanted to some unbelievable boot here. I'm... My golly, who'd have thought the mass bull is Sheriff Terrible? Would you like me to show you what happens to clumsy outlaws who make the mass bull angry? Can I think about it and get back to you later in the day? Nice try. <laughs> Believe me, this hurts you more than it does me. <laughs> Thank you, boss. <laughs> Get out of here! Get, get away from me! I didn't see anything, Sheriff Mask! I, I mean, Mask Terrible! I know what you mean, Puma. Clean the stage out. Looks like we're a day late and a dollar short. Marshall! Oh. Huh? Puma, you all right? Yeah, but please tell me we're a dream. I saw the mass bull and he weren't the mass bull at all. He was really... Sheriff Terrible. He was Sheriff Terrible. Huh? You weren't dreaming, Puma. I was afraid of that. Like the code of the West says, if you wait long enough, every snake will shed his mask. Yep. There you are, Marshal. An arrest warrant for the good Sheriff Terrible, alias the notorious outlaw, the Mask Bull. But I can tell you, I don't like it. Not one bit. Accusing a law cow of criminal injustices can have, shall we say, repercussions. This witness of yours had better be on the up and up, or you are going to be on the up and up to your neck in trouble. I appreciate the warning. Adios, Mayor. Now to find the sheriff. Yep. <laughs> well, if it ain't Calamity Kate. Mm, Miss Kate? <laughs> I just got word my package from Jersey City was stolen right off the Moon Mesa stage and in broad daylight. That and other things. Well, Marshal, I gotta get it back. Pronto. Package? What's in it? That'd be Miss Kate's business. Well, much obliged, Dakota. It is of a personal nature. Well, now rest easy, Calamity. We have an idea who made off with your package, and we're heading over to arrest him right now. <laughs> the marshal's coming to arrest you, Sheriff. The mayor done sent me to tell you to make yourself scarce. Those dag burn cowboys again? That runt Puma's starting telling tales awful quick. <laughs> Sheriff? Sheriff Terrible. Sheriff? What's a sheriff? Only a guilty varmint runs from the law, Saddlesore. Speaking of whom, where's the sheriff? Ow! Sorry, Sheriff. <laughs> you sure you don't know the sheriff's whereabouts? <laughs> What's a whereabout? Well, we'll find him, Saddle Sore. You can bet your stinger on that. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> uh, why are you so jumpy, Puma? <laughs> it's a long story. Marshal Montana told me to keep my eyes open and my mouth closed for safekeeping. Now, that'll be two bits. Uh, highway robbery. No wonder the marshal's worried about you. <laughs> the masked bull wants to see you. Help! 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 
Nothing good. We knew you'd say it his way. I get it. You mean cut the KT, huh? So long, Puma. Send it over the side. But that's my wagon. So kind of you to offer. about a little more hot water there, boys. Hot enough, Puma? It'll do, Colorado. Now, don't go forgetting my back. Dakota, what's keeping you? Pitiful. Just pitiful. Dakota, you got yourself a lot to learn about shining boots. How's everything going, partners? Maybe I better rephrase the question. You gotta get me out of this, Moo. I'm a cowboy, not a babysitter. Now, kid, Puma needs protecting. If JR hadn't have found him, we'd have no witness against the sheriff. I'll be back as soon as I find Terrible. Did I mention that I like a foot massage with my bath? I'm afraid it's true, Terrible. The good Marshal Montana has Puma locked up in protective custody. It's time something is done. Something of a desperate nature. Tarnation, there's gotta be another way. Not unless you plan on spending the rest of your days doing hard time in the federal pen. Okay, okay. They're spraying me, big brother. Don't make me sorry, I did, horrible. It's time for me to even the score with that lowdown Marshal Meathead Montana for sending me to prison. Hold on, horrible. You're not going anywhere. Got a way for both of us to get even. Uh, you always were the bossy one. Morning, Marshal. Morning, Mr. Peep. Well, hey, howdy, Moo. You looking for breakfast? Afraid not, Miss Lily. Looking for a varmint. And I just found him. With the blue plate special and sourdough toast on the side. Yeah. Eat up, terrible. Because your next meal is going to be in jail. You're under arrest. It's about time, Montana. Losing your touch? <laughs> Go ahead, Marshal. Lock me in good and tight. Satisfied? Not until you're convicted as the masked bull. <laughs> then you're gonna be mighty disappointed. Hmm? <laughs> Your grimy mitts off my gold! <laughs> yeah! Nobody messes with my gold mine. Besides, I want my package back. <laughs> No, 
no, no. I said three pillars. There. That's much better. Oh, Colorado, how's that grub a coming? My stomach's starting to sound like a stampede through a tea kettle. Oh, just what you ordered, Puma. Beans and biscuits. Ain't you forgetting my bib there, Dakota? Why, you look a might put out there, Dakota. Remember what the good Marshal Moo said. Take care of your witness. <gasps> How much Tabasco you put in these beans? You boys trying to poison me? Best idea I heard all day. Water, water. Where did you boys hide the door? Oh, right there where it is. Can't you see it? Oh, uh, yeah. Now, Marshal Moo Montana, let's hear the ridiculous case you're bringing against the brave and honorable Sheriff Terrible. Yeah, nice to know you're impartial, Judge Baloney. For my first witness, I call the town handyman, Puma. Moo, Moo, I got some news for you. Later, kid. But Moo... It'll have to keep. Now, Puma, when the masked bull was unveiled, who did you see? Well, it appeared to me to be Sheriff Terrible. Order, order, I say. Now, Puma, who would you say that appeared to be? Uh, appears to be Sheriff Terrible. And how about him? Sheriff Terrible. So to conclude, Puma, exactly how many sheriffs do you see in this room? Marshal, any further questions? Moo, I've been trying to tell you, Puma can't see past his nose. Where's the Marshal? Marshal, my gold mine's just been robbed by the masked bull. <laughs> you hear that, Montana? And I was under lock and key all day. And I still don't have my parcel back. Don't you worry, Miss Kate. We'll get your belongings. It, uh, it appears, Your Honor, that I might have made a mistake. Yes, sir, a big one. I'm releasing the good Sheriff Terrible and putting you, Marshal Moo Montana, under arrest for harboring a fugitive. What fugitive? Why, Puma, of course, for expectorating in public. We all pitched in to cover Puma's outstanding fines, Mayor, and I'll make sure he watches his expectorating in public. Yes, yes, yes. And I'll make sure that this is given to the proper authorities. You're no longer under arrest, Montana. I always pay my debts, Marshal. That's nice, Puma, but I don't wear boots. Oh, uh, are you sure, Marshal? I just can't figure it. I was sure we had terrible dead to rights. I'd like to know why Calamity's so riled up about her missing package. Oh, might be it's a new rodeo rope. Yeah, I sure could use one of those. Kid, you should be minding the code. Don't go sticking your nose in the prairie dog's hole, less than it's invited. Marshal Meathead, meet me at dead end this evening if you want the gold and come alone or forget it. The Mask Bull. P.S. I've got Calamity Kate's package, too. Well, that explains it. Yippee, I okay, yeah. Well, let's go and get him, Moo. Not this time, kid. The note says, come alone. Cyclone. So that's what I'm gonna do. See you later, boys. Oh, oh, Miss Lily. Oh, Miss Lily. Miss Lily, something almost happened. Well, well, calm down, Jack. Now, now tell me, what is it? Well, I guess the wires were down, because this just came in over the telegraph. Horrible escape from prison. <gasps> Did you warn the marshal? Everyone knows horrible's sure to come a-gunning for him. That outlaw's sworn to get even with Moo ever since Moo put him away. 
Oh, that's just it, Miss Lily. Nobody knows where the marshal is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't all that gold just make your mouth water? Man, it just ain't fair that Terror Bull and his brother get the cape at all. Yeah, maybe they'll let us keep Calamity's parcel. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. You wanna ask him? Not if I wanna live to tell about it. No way, brother! I gets to smash the marshal! Forget it, Horrible. I've been waiting a long time for this. He's mine. I've been waiting longer, so I'm doing me head in. You always were pig-headed, Horrible. Need any more convincing? Oh, Ma always like you better. That's because she's got good taste. Name's Colorado. That's kid to you. Oh, I hope Moo's gonna be okay, Dakota. Hey, you got any guesses what Calamity's got in that package of hers? I could really use a new trick lariat, or a saddle, or some fine snakeskin boots. What? What'd I say? It ain't nice to pry in a lady's personal business. Why, Dakota, if I didn't know better, I'd think you're sweet on Calamity. It's true, ain't it? That's between me and Miss Kate. Dakota, Colorado, oh, thank goodness I found you. Moo's got trouble. Terrible's no account twin brother, horrible. Just broke out of prison. Let's go, dude. Yeah. Yep. Mind if I join you, fellas? Moo's gonna need all the help he can get. <laughs> I wiped out Marshal Meathead! What do you mean, you? I did it myself. Did I hear my name mentioned, boys? Montana! But we smashed you! Now, now, boys, you ought to know what the code says by now. You can only knock a person down if he lets you believe he's a dummy. You tricked us! I've been told that outlaws are dim-witted. Now, I'm betting one of you is really that varmint horrible, and the other is terrible. And I'm aiming to find out. So hold out your hands, the both of you. Oh! <laughs> Watch your pretty little hands, Marshal! <laughs> <laughs> well, look here. It's the Marshal down and dirty. Now, to finish off Marshal Meathead Montana. No, he's all mine. You already took your turn. Never said I played fair. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always a huh? pleasure to see you, Moo. We saw you passing by and thought we'd say hello. Right friendly of you. <gasps> Come on, horrible lend a hand. He bought one of half the loot. Hey, you do. Go back and get it. Go, man, get it. Whoa! Now, why can't all outlaws stick together? Well, at least we still have one masked bull. Oh, darn stickers! You'll pay for this, Marshal Meathead! How'd you know it was him, Moo? His note. Nobody calls me Marshal Meathead but this low-down sidewinder. Look horrible. I can't prove it yet, but I'm sure you robbed Calamity Kate's mind while Terrible was in jail. In that case, where's my package? I, uh, sorta found this with the loot, Miss Kate. <gasps> uh. 
A dress? That's what's in the huh? package? Oh, now how am I gonna use that? First person to laugh gets the wrong end of this rope. I think you look right purdy in it, Miss Kate. Thanks, Dakota. You're a true cowboy. We'll take care of him now, Marshal. And he'll spend the rest of his sentence in solitary confinement. Couldn't happen to a nicer bull. I think I'm gonna have to get me some boots. still like Cowboys and Mumesa. You know, give it a chance. Only on episode three. Um, there was a lot of those, you know, people consider them Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle knockoffs. Um, people ask for SWAT cats. I don't think SWAT, I don't, I don't consider SWAT cats a turtles knockoff. But I guess I can see people seeing that. But, uh, yeah, sorry, can't air that. Tried. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't really consider SWAT Cats a uh, Turtles knockoff. I don't even really know if I consider this a Turtles knockoff. Because uh, there's no interaction with humans. There's no them on Earth. So, hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean... And I know it, was, it came around because of the turtle, so I guess it technically is a turtle knockoff, but I don't know. I just look at it weirdly, I guess. All right. So hopefully I'm going to toss a cartoon here at the end. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, uh, so just stay through the credits. Stay through me ranting and raving about stupid stuff, and, and uh, I'm going to give you my whole big spiel here in a second. Um... Like I said, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep adding a cartoon, or maybe even two sometimes, if I can find stuff that I can test. Uh, so, I'm going to say adieu, and remember to watch every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for Group Therapy TV podcast, uh, with all my interviews of movie directors, filmmakers, uh, horror hosts, comic book creators, you name it, I'll, I have them on the show. Um, every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Sci Friday. And then, of course, 8 a.m. Saturday morning for Saturday morning serials. Uh, you can now check us out at uh, the Jim and Dan comic book show, June 12th, at the Wright State Student Union Center in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I will be there from 10 to 4. I'll be selling comic books and all kinds of stuff as Are You Game. Uh, then you can also check us out June 26th at the Miami Valley Center Mall in Piqua, Ohio, the old Elder Beerman's building. We will be running PiquaCon out of there. You can come check us out there. Um, I will be there as RU Game. I might be there as a, you know, group therapy Saturday morning serial guy. I might be there as the captain. Come check it out. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll autograph something for you. Um, also, if anybody, 
Um, I, I'm, I'm working on something extra. If I do a patron, that you guys can get something extra, maybe. Like uh, shout outs and uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. I, I'll make a DVD of a show or something and you know, sign it and throw it out to you guys. Um, I'll give you something. Maybe give you an extra episode or um, I guess since it wouldn't technically be on YouTube, then I can just give you the full cartoon if, if stuff's been edited for uh, YouTube. I can I can send you the, the DVD with everything on it. I don't know. So, I'm going to bid you a good morning, a good afternoon, a good night, whenever you watch this. And uh, take care. Just because you grow older doesn't mean you have to grow up. Um, what is it? Growing old is mandatory. Growing up isn't. So I will let you guys go. Have a good day. And uh, stick around and maybe there's a cartoon after this. I hope. Because uh, I'm just telling you there is and then there might not be. So take care. Later. Okay, men, Operation Pac-Man will commence at exactly 0900 hours. Uh, what time is that in civilian talk, Clyde? 9 a.m., dummy. The operation will begin at the sound of the chime. Three, two, one. Move them out! With this gut, Pac-Land will be ours for the chomping. Mm, it makes my mouth water just thinking about it. Speed it up, you guys! Hmm, nothing like a relaxing drive without those ghastly ghost monsters on our tail, huh, Pepper? Right, Pac. Hmm, guess I'll have to pass that slowpoke in front of me, huh? Hey, you ghost monsters! Get that clunker of yours moving, will you? <laughs> Ghost Monsters! Oh! That's right, Pat Fink, and we got a little surprise for you. Yeah, a surprise attack. Prepare to let him have it. Okay, Blinky, let's load the guck hole. With what? Guck. What else? Oh, boy. We gotta get out of here fast and get some power pellets. Let him have it. Guys, load her again! Nothing in this world could save us now. Another perfect three-point landing. Two feet in my face. Oh, and Pac Land is that? It's Super Pac. Sorry, no time for autographs. I've got an emergency to handle. Now, where does that emergency go? Here, emergency. Here, boy. Uh, excuse me. Can it wait, son? I've got to find that emergency. Uh, I hate to bother you, Super Pac, but, uh, 
This is the emergency. It is? Of course it is! Why do you think I came here from my cosmic abode far beyond space and time? <clears throat> oh yes! The emergency! Stop! Oh yeah? Why should we? Excellent question. Glad you asked. Why should they stop? Because you said so. Because I said so! I did? No creep in fancy tights is gonna tell us what to do. Okay, Inky, now! Oh no! My super suit! You've smudged it! You can hit me, you can call me names, you can steal my galoshes, but no one smudges my super suit! Let's get out of here! Now you'll see why the girls say I have the hottest eyes in the galaxy. And now, for the old one, two. One, two. I think we may get away. This looks like a perfect time to practice my ghost golf. One super time warp space hole coming up. Easy, you'll all get your turn. Hey! Oh, we'd like to thank you for saving us by inviting you to lunch at our house, Super Pack. Why, I'd be delighted. How could anyone refuse such a lovely pack beauty as you? Of course, I only eat the finest pack steaks and plenty of greens. <laughs> Good for my complexion, you know. Wonderful house you've got here, Pac-Man. Oh, how cute and thoughtful of you to hang a picture of me over your mantle. Uh, I hate to disappoint you, Super Pac, but that's a mirror. Of course it is. I knew it all along, just testing you. No, no, not Pac-Pac. Super Pac. Oh, brother. Uh... I think he wants you to play ball with him. Okay, fella, go get it! Well, aren't you going to get it? <laughs> Fine looking son you've got there, Pac-Man. What's his name? Uh. Baby. Pack Baby, nice name. That's fun. Well, well, ready for another trip? Uh, no, no. Help yourself, Super Pack. Why, I'm so hungry I could eat a house. On second thought, I guess I'm only hungry enough to eat half a house. Hey, Inky, let's have some more of them rivets. One order of rivets coming up. Stand up to him! One chomp my Robo Ghost, and Super Pack will be super finished! <laughs> there! The houses are all good as new! 
I know you'd love me to stay, but I'd really better be going now. Come back soon, Super Pack! Uh, but not too soon. <sighs> Boy, he may have saved Packland, but I feel a lot safer now that he's gone. Something tells me Packland's in big trouble. Packy, look! Quick, see if you can stop it. I'll try and find Super Pack. Right. Oh, no, no, Pepper, not Super Pack. No, oh! Ah, any second now, and Pac-Lan will be at my mercy. Yeah, and we'll get revenge on that super Pack jerk. Shut up and press the auto shop button. Aye, aye, Captain Mess. Help! It's going to chop Pac-Lan! Run for your life! Now, where did I leave that stupid super time warp space hole? Super Pack! Oh, I'm glad I found you. You found my super time warp space hole, huh? Huh? No, but if you don't stop the robot ghost monster, the only hole around here is going to be Pack Land. Tell you what I'm going to do. You look for my missing hole, and I'll go talk to that giant robot. Is it a deal? It's a deal. Ha-ha! All you Earth people fall for that one. Attention, citizens of Pac Man! Turn over your power bottles to me, or I will chop your fair city into Pac Rubble! Over my chump body! Just what we had in mind, Pac Man! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! All right, that's far enough. I order you to surrender. All right, that does it! It's time for a super power pellet! This is super pack power! Shot! Turn around! What do you think you're doing? Uh oh, I think my chomping muscles are jammed. Oh no! I've got to stop Super Pack before he chumps up the entire city and I get the repair bill. <laughs> Super Pack's cosmic hole is my only hole. <laughs> this better work. It's okay, Packy. He's gone now. Oh, thanks, Pepper. Another few seconds of that guy and I think I would have gone Pack Cuckoo. Don't thank me all at once. It was nothing. Really, any red-blooded pack hero could have done it. Of course, I did it, so that makes me the greatest pack hero of them all. I guess that's why they call me Super Pack, as a matter of fact. You, you little fat fly! Where'd you learn to clean up so well, Chum Chum? Oh, doggy obedience school. Chum, clean as a whistle. Hey, what's happening, Pack Cousin? Dig my new wheel. No. Say, this garage of yours is a real mess. You ought to clean it up before I move in. 
move in. That's right. I just dropped out of high school. And you're the lucky winner of the Pac Junior Contest. Uh, I don't remember entering any Pac Junior Contest. You didn't. I entered for you. And as the winner, you get to have me live in your garage. Oh, well, how lucky can a guy get? Hey, hey, hey! Get an eyeball full of this far-out chump food. Sure it's nice of you to offer me lunch, Cousin Pepper. Mm -hmm. You sure are one primo cook. Why, thank you, PJ. Oh, boy. All that cleaning has sure made me hungry. Hey, where's all the food? Right here, cuz. Call me when dinner's ready. Packy, have you seen Pack Baby? He's up on the throttle, Pack Baby. Oh, oh no! no. Ghost monsters! Now pull over! Hey, feet, stop, will you? Oh no! My brakes are out! Uh, don't worry, folks. My uh, shoe insurance is paid up. Gosh, Pepper, we gotta do something about PJ. You're right, Packy. He's a nice boy, but he's. I know. A real pain in the chump. There's only one thing to do, Packy. We've got to convince him how important it is to go back to school. Hey, great idea. You're a genius, Pepper. Only how are we going to do it? Simple. You're going to take him to Pac-Land High and show him just how much fun it can be. Hey, right. I'm going to take... Hold it. No, no, wait. Not me. Pepper, not me. Oh, no, no. Pepper, please. Chalk up another one for PJ, Chomp Chomp. Hey, that's my pool table and my easy chair. It's cool, Packy. Like I'm only borrowing it for a couple of months. Hmm, okay. Two can play at this cool game. Uh, okay, PJ. Tell you what I'm gonna do. <laughs> hmm, whose side are you on anyway? Now, all right, Pat Junior, here's the deal. You spend one day at Packland High with me. Now, if you dig it, you go back home and re-enroll in school. Now, if you don't dig it, you can live in my garage for a year. <laughs> you made yourself a no-win backpack, cousin, because I'm never going to like school. School? Yuck. Gag me with a ghost monster, man. Uh-oh. I think I made a big mistake. Man. Uh, 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 it's uh, Pack Babies. My uh, chopper's in the shop. Hurry up, man. Like, I gotta get this over with so I can get back to the garage and get ready for the big gig tonight. Uh, gig? That's right. I'm having a little garage warming party with a couple hundred friends. A little Pack Rock, a little Pack Boogie. Hey, 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 Pack Chicks. PJ's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> Not you, old man. Him! Okay, PJ. Now you'll see how much fun pack physics can be. Good afternoon, class. I am Professor Batstein. And for our first experiment, I will demonstrate the basic law of motion. A body at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. Yeah, like a ghost monster. <laughs> PJ, shh. <laughs> All right, who spoke out? He did, Frizzhead. Oh, uh, yes, but you see, I was only trying to. Uh... So, you want to make sound waves with your mouth, do you? Wow! In that case, you will help me demonstrate the law of gravity. Oh, I know that one. What goes up must go <laughs> Yeah, except like when it's stuck to the ceiling. <laughs> 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 
true. But that brings us to the second law of gravity. Uh, don't tell me. What gets stuck must get unstuck. Is that what's going on? Give this boy an A. Oh, I think I'd prefer an ice pack. You see, PJ, school isn't just study, 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 you know. Hey, what do you say we uh, check out this drama class, huh? I'd rather check out of this snarky school. To chomp or not to chomp, that is the question. No, man, that isn't the question. The question is to act or not to act. And you couldn't act your way out of a power pellet tree. You can do better. Oh, no, uh, you see, uh, he didn't mean that. He was just, uh... Of course we can. Uh, we? Uh, PJ, uh, I don't think this is a very good idea. Sure it is. Now, just say your line. Uh, Romeo Pack? Oh, Romeo Pack? Uh, wherefore art thou, Romeo Pack? Like, are you blind, Juliet? I'm right here, babe. Come and get me. Oh, PJ! Here we come! Hey, wait for me! Uh-oh. Look out for Oh, Pack nurse, oh, Pack nurse. Wherefore art thou, Pack nurse? Okay, boys, who would like to volunteer to help me demonstrate the use of the rings? Ah, you see, PJ, if you go back to school, you could learn to be an expert in sports, like me. Really, Cousin Packy? Show me. Uh, who, me? Uh, oh, no, I, I, was, I was just a... Aren't you a little old to be in this class? Oh, uh, well, I guess you're right. Wait a minute. Exercise is good for you no matter what your age. Do your stuff, Packy. Hey, that was real cool. You never told me what a swinger you really are. <laughs> oh, yeah. You Tarzan, me chump. Oh, boy. Look at all those packed goodies. Nothing like school cafeteria food, huh? <laughs> What's the matter, PJ? You not hungry? Nah. I'm treating. Well, why didn't you say so? Hmm. Yes, sir, boy. School sure is a, a far out. <laughs> Isn't it, PJ? Yeah. The farther out of my life, the better. Hmm. You're not giving it a chance, PJ. Learning with all these intelligent and courteous kids can be a wonderful experience. Uh, isn't that right? Can it, Pack Punk? Hey, man, you can't do that to my cousin. No? Who's gonna stop me? He is. Oh, yeah? You and who else, Runt? What is going on here? Uh-oh. Uh, oh, hi there, Mr. Uh, Pack Principal. Who started this Pack Ruckus? He did! Uh, me. Well, no. You see, it, uh, it was an accident. Uh, I mean, I didn't mean it. Well, what I actually mean is that I, uh... <laughs> now get out of here and chase some ghost monsters like you get paid to. Oh, well, I guess I didn't do a very good job of convincing you to go back to school, did I? Are you kidding, man? I never knew how much fun learning could be. Oh! Oh, you mean, uh, you're not going to be staying in my garage all year? That's right, Packy. I'm going back to school. Hey, now that's great. Well, this calls for a celebration. You said it, Pack daddy -o. Hey, 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 party at DJ! Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, not at my house. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Hey, hold on, stop. No, no, it's wrong. Not house. Hey, hey, 